I'm Joe Malky. And I'm Sydney Rudd, and we've been dating for a little less than six months. Emily Shrog, and almost two months. Nathan Rouse. My name is Tanner Magruder. Uh, we've been dating for a year and four months. And I'm Liz Tewalt. Same. <laughs> you want to go first? Um, Jasmine Patterson. Hey, about you. <laughs> <laughs> we're both freshmen, um, and we've been together for... It's going to be five years, June 3rd. Mm, I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs>
she'll be open to be able to criticize and also support and help each other. It's not just, oh, I'm just your friend, mm -hmm. just to be your friend, or I'm just your boyfriend or your girlfriend, just to be your boyfriend and girlfriend. It's like, I'm here because I care for you and I want you to be able to build on yourself, your self-confidence, your character. Mm -hmm. So when I'm not there, you know what to do, so. I think a lot of it is like, I think it's not necessarily the purpose, but I think the large byproduct of dating is you figure out if you can grow up well with somebody else. And I think especially being like young, like being a young adult, like we're constantly growing and we're constantly growing up. And so dating is a lot of figuring out like, does this person compliment me well? As like, I learn more about who I am and like where I wanna be and like who I want to be. And I think dating is like the process of figuring out if you do that well with another person. Yeah, no, I'd agree. I mean, the number one difference is love. Mm -hmm. You got godly love and you got worldly love. <laughs> and um, usually when you see Christian couples, most of them stay together because they understand what love is because not only they know where true love comes from, they also experience it compared to worldly couples where they think usually, they, usually how they love is from the household they grew up in. Mm -hmm. And that kind of plays a lot in their own um, relationships. Something I've, I've actually thought about this is I feel like some secular couples, they date so they're not alone because like, honestly, I like as Christians, we know we're never alone. We know we always have Christ. Mm -hmm. But I feel like sometimes like secular couples, they're, they're so intent on dating to feel loved because they just, they don't, like have the love of Christ in their lives and I feel like when Christian couples date they're dating to um, their, well, their intention should be to like grow closer to God with each other and to serve the world um, like as, as a couple and because um, like, dating and relationships and marriage is a gift from God and I, I believe that the difference is that like Christian couples grow strong, stronger um, to God, and like they 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 can be used as like a powerful weapon to witness to other people too. You go first. I think. I think that the greatest difference is that we view like our relationship, or like I would view a relationship as a reflection to teach us more about the way that God loves us, and so in my relationship, like when there is like selflessness or when those things are present, like that is not just for me on this earth, like that is for me to understand God better and for like me to be more, like just feel like I'm more understood by God, not even like the person that I'm with. And I think it's also, um, it's also a way to like bring glory to God. I think it's a, I think God is, can be glorified through really all things we do. And I think this is, relationship is one way and, and how he teaches us and how he molds us to glorify him through the trials and the victories of dating. Mm -hmm. um, I would say for, in my mind, you threw out the word intentionality um, because I think as Christian couples we, we seek to glorify God with our actions and our words and so find, finding a future spouse that would like glorify God and um, like find his plan for us whereas secular couples I think seek instant gratification and whatever that may mean to them um, and so I think there's a little bit of difference in maybe motives um, mm -hmm. yeah and I'd say even going off of that like the purpose of eventually like a couple um, in post marriage is to reflect um, the image of Christ and his bride and so I'd say that takes even like greater level of intentionality than I think even a lot of Christian couples can often live up to because mm -hmm. that's a, a huge standard so. just experiencing love and knowing what it, how it's supposed to be from a biblical aspect so I think yeah that's like one of the biggest differences between the two
Um, I think for the men, it is a. I think it kind of like ebbs, it, it, it ebbs and flows. I think a little bit. I think, like right away, there's an expectation to um, be kind of chivalrous, which there kind of always is, but in the sense that you pay for things, like you, you do like. I don't know, like hold the door open, like do all those things. A lot of the times in the modern day world, the expectation that tends to get set is um, that a provider and uh, a lot of the times, sometimes in, in an unhealthy way, we can take the, the masculine aspect to an extent where guys aren't supposed to express emotion in the context of a relationship, but they're just supposed to be there to listen to emotion. And I think that can get into a really unhealthy state where if a guy can't express his emotion, then a lot of the times if there's any frustration or stuff, that'll build up and then it's like, it's gotta come out sometime, so. so uh, <laughs> <laughs> overall, the man supposed to be the head of the household. He's supposed to carry everybody, carry everybody problems on our back and he's supposed to be the hero of our wives and our kids. We're supposed to not show emotions. We're supposed to not like girly things or anything that will make us soft. We're supposed, supposed to be strong. strong. We're supposed <laughs> to be, you know, probably flying in the sky and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, I'm over exaggerating, but in the culture today, that's that's the that's the uh, uh, for that. that's the standpoint mm -hmm. that men is held against. I think there, honestly, I felt a lot more expectations in dating to be like on guys. And then I think that I like don't start working in expectations for women until I see that in like a context of marriage. Because like, I think that my expectations are probably faulty in both, but that's just like how it naturally is for me. So like, cause when I think of expectations for a girl that's dating, it's like, you look nice for dates and you say sweet things and you, like, you're pretty amiable, you don't, like, fight a ton. Not that I do any of those things. <laughs> but those would be the expectations. <laughs> you know, or, like, the kind of that submissive sort of thing. Um, yeah. I think for the women, um, I would say they take more of a, not passive, but that's the best word I can think of, role. Um, and kind of being the dainty little figure that um, they need people to see in movies um, and just kind of go along for the ride um, and not maybe necessarily have a voice necessarily, um, but I know that's not always the case. Um, for women, <laughs> uh, um, well, I guess we're like the weak ones, super over emotional uh, and basically like just not say anything and let the man be the man. Yeah. And, uh, that's how it's like supposed to be. But I don't know, back to men not being able to show emotions. I just, I think that's sad because it's like you as a human, you naturally have emotions. Mm -hmm. Guys and girls are so differently, and made, made differently, and um, understanding those differences, maybe not as understanding, but like just being willing to be there and to help each other through that. And, um, yeah. And it's just like, I, but I think as time goes on, like, sometimes that slows down. Like, we can split meals sometimes in cost, or we split who's going to drive tonight, or things like that, where it's kind of, I don't know, it ups and flows as the rules. I guess, I guess you do have time. Um, any last thoughts that you like to give to anyone thinking about dating or currently in a dating relationship? I'd say the big thing is just to make sure your height, your heart is in the right place before you get into a relationship. Um, like, don't just get into it because of the pressure that there is at like Northwestern or other places. Um, but make sure you're ready for it, and then make sure that it's the right person before you start dating them. Yeah, I would say um, just because everyone's dating, not everyone is dating, and you're not less of a person because you're not in a relationship, uh, you still have 
integrity, honor, all these good things. Um, you don't, your identity is not in whether or not you're in a relationship. Um, and sometimes God does call us to be single. And so whether that's just for a season or a long period of time, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, just from what we've experienced, communication is just really key in dating relationships. Um, there'd be some, there's gonna be like, dating's not all fun, like, like all good. I mean, there's gonna be trials and hardships in dating. That's just, that's the thing we gotta all realize is like, um, but like for us, we, we would face these like trials and like rough times where when we were like lacking in communication, when we weren't on the same page. Um, and then we would resolve it by just talking to each other, saying, here's what, what's wrong, here's what I believe we, like, we need to fix, and just figuring it out. Um, and just being completely open with each other. That's something we've been doing, is we haven't been like hiding anything. We haven't been, we've just been sharing everything, everything that's bothering us, and everything we feel like we need to work in. Whether it's just one of us or both of us feeling it, we're just not afraid to share it. And it's really been strong and helpful in getting us on the right pages and getting us on the right track and pursuing a stronger relationship. Mm -hmm. Just communicate. Like that's my biggest thing. Like that's, I feel like my thing, like since day one, I've always wanted it's just to communicate. Regardless of whether it's, it's a good conversation or it's a hard conversation, I think communication is key. And if we're not, we're just going to harbor um, ill will and we can get frustrated more easily. Mm -hmm. And we can not love one another well if we are communicating. I think for people in like relationships, one of the things that has been most helpful for me is to like learn to not compare to other relationships. Because I think that's really, really difficult, especially in a Christian subculture. Like it's just so difficult to not constantly compare to tons of other relationships around you that you know um, you don't know all the facts of, so it's easy to make um, inaccurate comparisons. I found like one of the best ways to work against that in myself is to like have a really solid like close friend of mine that is like in a more similar stage. So like I'm not engaged, so someone that also is not engaged or like someone that also is like dating someone and like almost at the same seriousness level, like that has allowed me to like have more real real conversations with like her and her experiences than just letting my mind fabricate comparisons. Because I think that when you're just like that has helped me because like I think dating is really fun but I think it presents a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. So like having like someone real to talk about it rather than make comparisons to has helped me like grow the most in our relationship. Mm -hmm. 100% agree. I would say patience, take your time, don't rush into anything. Mm -hmm. Especially don't rush into relationships. It's stupid. It's don't, yeah, don't do it if your friend think y'all cute together. That, that was ours. <laughs> That's why I didn't think it was going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work at first, but we actually took time and stuff to understand each other. I'm Krista Pacheco. <laughs> and I'm Wonder Wonder. And, <laughs> and we've been dating for over, a little over a year. 13 months. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so when did we decide to start dating? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I just felt like as we got to know each other, um, you know, as friends first, um, and after just having multiple conversations, uh, we just kind of want to take that next step into getting to know each other on a new level and, uh, um, you know, help us help each other grow and encourage each other. And I felt, felt like dating would be the right stage for that. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, Perfectly. It's, it's all good. Um, what are our favorite things to do as a couple? Eat. We love to eat. We love to eat. Uh, we love to cook and then we love to eat our things. I honestly like to eat. <laughs> and like, just, just like to eat things together. <laughs> we, like to eat. we like to eat things together. Um, I like exploring like the cities, weather, and just exploring like, new places that are out there. Um, but yeah, a lot of things to do. 
watch movies. Watch, watch movies. Yeah, I just watch movies. Uh, like, I do like to watch movies, but you know more about movies than I do. It's true. Yeah. to him and show his glory like that's the purpose of marriage it's not just like love so then if that's what marriage is and like that should be the purpose of dating is like preparing for that lifelong commitment to each other and of like glorifying the lord by loving each other yes what do you think is the difference between christian couples versus people that aren't christians and dating so secular couples what do you think the difference is between those two Yes, um, I actually, I think there's a good difference, like a solid difference, um, and kind of relating to the purpose of dating, like, I think there's a greater depth among, and not all Christian couples, but I feel like among the people that we know, and, like, love and respect that are Christian couples, it's like, there's a depth there, because it is like, okay, this is more than just us, like, this isn't simply just about two of us finding happiness, and, like, seeking after happiness, whereas I know, like, a lot of my good friends that are secular couples, like, it's all that purpose of, like, finding someone who loves you, that you love, that you're happy with, who gives you, makes you happy, who, like, serves you, which are all, like, good things, but I think those, like, I've seen them run out really quickly, because there's not a foundation of, like, selfless love, because there's not an example of, like, what Christ has done for them and how to love. Yeah. Yeah, and I think from, you know, viewing my friends that aren't Christians um, and then friends that are Christians, I think um, it's, there's more, you know, boundaries um, set in Christian couples, yes. and those boundaries are backed up not just from other people, but that's found, um, kind of founded on like, our beliefs, and, you know, because we believe in God, you know, we set these boundaries aside so that, yeah, we can have the relationship, you know, last longer, and, you know, it does, it is a segue towards marriage, and there's that outlook and that goal out there. Obviously, it's not the ultimate goal, but mm -hmm. um, it is, I believe, those things keep it, like, lasting longer. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, you know, our expectations, whether influenced by our parents, or developed ourselves um, can influence our thoughts and actions in our dating relationship. Uh, so, what do you think? You know, thinking gender specific, like, what do you think are the expectations of men and women in dating generally? Um, don't have to think Christian or secular, just generic. Um, I'll answer for the men. Go for it. Um, I think obviously there is there's a. I think men are just expected to be more like. Chivalrous, so, yeah, chivalrous, um, just with like, you know, looking out for the women, like being polite, opening the door for, you know, men's expected to pay for, for meals and take them out on dates. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, there's that expectation there. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I think that is definitely said within dating. And also, I think... You know, I think the men are just supposed to continue to like provide for the woman, making sure like the woman is happy mm -hmm. in the dating relationship. Yeah. 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 That's valid, and that it is expected that men are like the first move. Mm -hmm. There's like I know in our relationship, like I wanted you to make that first move. <laughs> yeah. Long story. <laughs> 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 Yeah, 
Hi, Dilly. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Um, yeah, what about women? Um, I don't know, because it's, dating is different than marriage. Like, I feel like I have a different mindset of, like, expectations of women in dating versus expectations of women in marriage. Because mm-hmm. I think when you're dating, it's not really, it's not like, oh, the woman has to cook and clean when they're dating. It's like, yeah. that's what you typically see in a marriage. Yeah. Um, so dating, that's, I actually don't know. Because dating is kind of weird. You know, it's not not like roles right for women in dating it's just kind of like do you feel like do you feel like women have like input in the generic gen generally do women more take initiative in dating relationships or are they more of like giving input and supporting Mm -hmm. that relationship you know yeah yeah uh I mean, it does, obviously it depends on each couple. I I would say that they they take initiative because it is like, okay, I'm dating this person as well and like, I have my own life because it is like you're still dating so you're still separate, mm-hmm. separate, not together as if yeah. you'd be married. So it is this like independence of a woman in a dating relationship. Yeah. I, that's a, that's a hard question. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So then, as Christian couples, what do you think is our goal or purpose in those relationships? Yes. I think that kind of also goes back up to what I said earlier about the purpose of dating. Mm-hmm. But I do think, like, the purpose, one, I mean, yes, in preparation of, like, long term goals, and specifically also because, like, you don't want to just date to date because like yeah. this is there's hearts involved there's souls involved here so to just date flippantly is unwise yeah. um but even just like as hopefully in a christian community there's like people around us that are in dating relationships that we can connect with and mm-hmm. learn from or teach um, i would say is a good goal all of that like under like the goal of our relationship the goal i hope every christian relationship is to grow closer to the lord Mm -hmm. and actually make a difference in the world in our dating relationship like i don't want it to just be about us dating and having fun and going on fun dates like no i hope that people are impacted Mm -hmm. in a positive way yeah and i think even going off of that i don't think you know you know as a christian even before getting into a dating relationship Mm -hmm. And now you're in, you're putting in a situation where you know you're more on an intimate level with another person. Um, the goal doesn't change at yeah, all. It's totally. like obviously you want to whatever you do, you know, you glorify um, the Lord in that. So it's just like that includes our dating relationship. Like, how are we glorifying the Lord in like our communication and um, how we act? towards one another and with other people how are we serving other people how are we loving others and ourselves and each other uh so yeah i feel like our christian goal and purpose stays the same when you get into a dating relationship yes i concur yeah so then do you have any last thoughts you want to give to anybody thinking about dating or are currently in a dating relationship yes yeah my but of advice would be to yes hold on to your passions and the things that you believe you need to stand up for but also just to remember you're bringing another person into your life who comes from a different background and a different family and with different passions and as in and not in just dating relationships but any relationship like you need to be willing to sacrifice some things in hopes that the other person will also sacrifice. Obviously that doesn't mean being a pushover or letting people step all over you, but healthy relationships is give and take. Um, I think that's something that I wish I would have known before, but I've learned all, not just from this, but from like other friendships where it's like, okay, if I want this to be a good relationship and I really love this person, like am I willing to lay down like my passions temporarily to help this person, to serve this person, to come alongside. And again, that's not just you, that's like my best friends, that's just my family. Um, 
in hopes that they would do the same for me because they love me and want to see me grow myself. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I guess my advice for anyone just thinking about dating, um, we want to take that next step. Um, definitely don't rush into it too too much. Um, obviously, it's like yes, dating allows for two people to get to know each other on a deeper level. Um, however, you definitely need to know like what your motives and intentions are when getting into a dating relationship. Uh, so try to discover that um, as you know with the other person that you're friends with and you're thinking about you know dating. Um, yeah, just check your motives uh, with yourself. Um, and then move on from there. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm cutting that. <laughs>